morning, London, and this is the London Tea Party. I'm your host, Lillian Stiles. Today's date is Sunday, May 11, 1867. Today's topic is something that has been a dark secret of London for many years, medical care. Earlier this week, I went to the Whittingham Asylum, about eight miles west from the city of London, to interview Georgia Horan and her life in the asylum. Take a look at what I found. Oh my god, you did this to me, you did this to me. Did what? Look at here, I had a new royal blue corset. It was beautiful, beautiful, I said beautiful, it was beautiful. That morning my husband left so early, the first time I saw him that day was when I was near the apple, the apple thing, and I was near the apple vendor. And then where swarms of men around me asking me all types of questions, questions, questions. One even, one even stroked my hair. He was all like, stroke, stroke. And, my husband said that my corset was too revealing, so so he left me in a he left me in, in a coat closet, and then two days next day I'm right here. Okay. Well, just came Do you have any friends? I'm not crazy, but, not, but, but I'm alone. What have they done to you here? Uh, London Bridge. And then it comes down. It goes. Down, it goes up and then it goes down, up and down, up and down. 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 Up don't help to help you find your way out. Oh, please. Just, just go. Do you say my cat, please? Save my lipstick. I love for the days when I was beautiful. <laughs> what you just saw was only a small glimpse of what goes on inside the walls of asylums here in London. Let's not forget there are people in the streets right now who are in need of medical care. Can the doctors of London deliver the kind of health care they need? I looked into the types of medical care that our doctors are delivering, and truth be told, our doctors are doing a pretty poor job. When people, wealthy or not, check into hospitals, most of them don't recover from their illness. When medications fail, doctors return to the power of prayer. I don't think physicians are the people you can trust either, considering they didn't go to school. Our medical students are taught to operate on the injured quickly and inefficiently. I had the opportunity to watch a live surgery along with 150 medical students, who were also watching Carter Young, a young man, get his leg amputated. The surgery took no more than 10 minutes. Carter Young had no anesthetic. He was completely alert during his surgery. I also had the chance to talk to his doctor. Take a look at the information I found. I watched your operation on Carter Young, and I couldn't help but notice your dirty hands and apron. Could you tell me why they both were so dirty? Well, I don't wash my hands before surgery. I prefer to wash them after. Are you worried about any extra bacteria entering the wounds of the patient? No, not really. How often do you clean your apron? Not often. Maybe one every half year. Do you consider yourself a quack? No, not really. I know what I'm doing. I just prefer to do the surgeries quickly. This way, I get more customers. The more customers, the more money I make. Today we have a letter asking for some advice. Um, it's from a woman named Cynthia Clareson, and it says, Dear Abby, my daughter wants to start wearing a corset. She is 14 years of age. I started wearing my corset at the age of 15, um, and now I have very bad spine damage. What should I do? Um, your help is very much needed, Cynthia Clareson. Discuss it with your daughter first. Um, you should share with her your difficulties from wearing a corset just to make sure she actually wants to wear one. But expert Selma brought it and she told me, and I quote, When corsets are too tight, they basically mess up your ribs and organs, sometimes to the point where you die because you can't breathe. Coming to her. But also while you're talking to your daughter, you should tell her to pick up the new book, Oliver Twist, written by the famous Charles Dickens. This book is all about an orphan boy who was born in a workhouse, and right after he's born, he's born his... um. Mother dies without wearing her wedding ring, Ooh. along with his adventures throughout the streets of London. So definitely recommend you go pick it up at your local library.
According to Bruce Robinson, the medical care in London today is almost entirely based on chance. George Landau says the surgery today is a big role in our death rates. The more surgeries that are performed, the higher the mortality rates are going up. Katrina Slaprandi says the most popular way of ejecting infected blood out of people is by putting leeches on their skin. Today's London is full of quacks. Quacks are the doctors who claim they know what they're doing, sewers and streets, and using the power of soap and water. Our certified doctors are even horrible people. All they do is give mediocre effort to the working class, but these are also the same people who die trying for the wealthy. Matthew Strange quotes, The only thing people might consider worse than the sickness itself is a trip to the doctor. Those are just a few examples of why London is slowly but surely shriveling into pieces and falling apart.